Hi, this is Matthew Moody from yourhmoexpert.com and welcome to this week's vlog. I'd like to welcome you to the uh, vlog and uh, we've got a lot of topics that I'd like to cover today so without further ado, let's get cracking. So first of all, let's talk about the base rate reduction and what that means for property investors. Clearly last week the Bank of England reduced the base rate uh, by another 0.5% and we now have some of the lowest interest rates we've ever seen. What does that mean in terms of lending? What's happened to the banks? Well, the main buy to let high street lenders haven't really changed very much at all. Tracker rates are pretty much the same as they were. There's a few new products that have come through onto the market, but there's not really a lot out there. In terms of the banks, what's happened there? Are they lending more money? Not really. Uh, Barclays, it looks, may have to go cap in hand to the government for some help. HSBC at the moment are still out there trying to raise money from their own funds, but potentially they may have to go that way as well. So what's happening at the moment is the government is obviously taking large amounts of shares in all of the, uh, what were privately owned banks, uh, into the, the public purse strings. So does this mean that lending is going to start to relax, start to ease up, and we're going to, be, going to start being able to get back into the market? I don't know, nobody does, but I think one of the hot topics right now, and it's something identified in my Your Property Network uh, article this month, is finance is key. There are so many deals out there at the moment with 20, 30, 40, 50. I've even seen a deal this week with 60% discount come through uh, off the RICS price that if you've got the cash right now and you've got the finance, then it really is uh, It's a big supermarket. Go in, choose what you want, and uh, two or three years from now, you'll really be reaping the benefits. So finance is key and one of the things that we've been focusing very much on is working with financial institutes to look at who who would who's actually out there that wants to lend money, uh, what are the types of people that they want to lend money to, because a lot of the professional property investors at the moment are being kind of left out on the cold. Uh, some of the, the high street vital lenders such as the HBOS group have said no thank you. Uh, we liked your business once, but uh, we, we're going to go elsewhere now. Thank you very much. Uh, so commercial finance is really one of the few options available. And we've very much been focusing that over the last couple of months, uh, working with some financial providers. And we've got a few now who are very willing uh, to talk to people. And uh, we're starting to see some good results coming through. Uh, we can offer bridge and refinance. We can offer just standard purchase. Refinance within less than six months is, is fine as well. Uh, there's even development, refurbished finance available for, for those people that want it. LTVs obviously differ enormously, but on commercial loans, generally at the moment, it's a 70% LTV. Very difficult getting more than that. And to be honest, with the market the way it is right now and prices seeming to continue to drop, then building in that 30% equity is, is a good thing to do, I think, anyhow, for, for, for the future. So finance, uh, it's really something everybody should be focused on. Uh, I know that uh, a few of the uh, illustrious uh, gurus out there have talked about it in the past. Uh, in fact, they were talking about it last year. Uh, and the question you have to ask yourself is, have you done anything about it? Have you gone outside your normal channels and tried to find that finance on your own? If you haven't or you don't know where to start, then drop me a line at info at your I'll put you in contact with our guys. Uh, we do have finance available. Uh, it's available for property professionals. It's also available for those people who have maybe uh, got uh, another job and want to invest in property uh, in, in, in the background. That's fine as well. They're, they're very much open to anybody. And these kind of guys are not really bothered by the amounts of dips that you've had. So if you've had to have a lot of dips because you've not been able to get the products that you want, that's fine they're not too bothered about that at all what they're really looking at is what are your assets and liabilities can you meet your day-to-day -day living expenses and is is the deal a good deal at the end of the day it doesn't matter what kind of deal is brought to the table if it doesn't stack up it's a bad deal we've been offered a, a stonking what looked like a stonking deal on paper uh, i think it was about 54 percent discount off the rick's prices which is nice uh, we could potentially finance that at 55 percent ltv so potentially it could have been quite a good payday. But the reality of it is the rents do not meet the mortgage payments. We'd be probably losing half a million to a million dollars a year. Uh, this, this deal is actually in the US. But 
So the deal has to stack up no matter what. Cash flow is king. It's something I go on and on, on about it on my uh, blog on www.yourhmlexpert.com. Go and have a look at, at, the, at the blog if you want to know a bit more about cash flow and try and get your finance sorted out. Next thing I just want to uh, address is get lots of questions asked through the blog uh, yourhmlexpert.com and there's, there's a few that keep coming up now and then so I just wanted to address one this week and then if people want to send in questions for the next vlog I'll be more than happy to, to try and answer them. So one question that does keep coming up at the moment is what happens when my tenants start, stop paying the rent? You know if, if your tenants stop paying the rent then it's something that you need to address as quickly as possible. Generally what we do in our business is all of our rents are paid on the first of the month so no matter when you moved in you know they always pay on the first of the month if we do it pro rata when they first move in then they have to pay again on the first makes it a lot easier from the point of view of looking at when the rent's coming in checking that they're in and then chasing anybody anybody up that hasn't paid so what happens what we do is around about the fifth of the month we check all the bank accounts find out who's paid who hasn't paid we then chase up anybody that hasn't paid they're already five days overdue. They know that the rent's due in on the first, so we know at that stage who hasn't paid. We basically then give them three days to get that payment in, and then we remind them again. Once day 10 kicks in, we essentially send them a note saying that a £30 late payment fee will be added to their account uh, if they don't pay. Uh, generally, most people will pay by then. It's once it gets beyond 10 days that you need to start seriously following up in terms of face-to-face -face meetings, uh, and also speaking on the phone if you haven't before then. We use an automated system through, through text and email so we don't actually start on to people till day 10 but you can obviously speak to people before then if you want to. What happens if uh, you can't get hold of the tenant? You need to send them a letter. Uh, we have a series of letters that we send people, three letters in total. First one sent out uh, at day 10, second one will be sent out at day 20 if they haven't uh, got back in contact with us and the third one will be sent out on day 30. Uh, these, each of these letters escalates in the kind of severity and the, the, uh, the tone of the language and is very much designed to get them to pay as soon as possible because clearly you've got mortgages and bills to pay, you know, they're contractually obliged to pay that rent so they should be paying it as soon as possible. What happens if they still don't pay the rent? Well, depends what kind of, uh, where, where they are in the tenancy. First of all, you know you can issue a Section 21 notice uh, if they're at the end of their tenancy, and that will give you uh, a certain path that you can move down. But what happens if they're in the middle of their tenancy, which, to be honest, is what more than often happens? Well, once they're more than two months in arrears or eight weeks in arrears, depending on whether they're paying weekly or monthly, you can issue them with a Section 8 notice. And a Section 8 notice is basically a legal notice giving them notification that you intend to repossess the property and there's a couple of different grounds under which you'd normally uh, send that section 8 the ones I normally use are grounds 8, 10 and 11 but this can differ depending on what the reasons are those grounds are related to payment being behind uh, consistently behind uh, or more than a couple of months behind etc uh, I'm not going to go into all the reasons right now you can you can find them online but that issue that notice is issued gives them 14 days to respond, i.e. by moving out, paying the rent, or as sometimes happens, they stay in, they say, well, take me to court. And w once they start saying that, then you know you really do have a problem on your hands. So what do you do next? Well, if they haven't left or they haven't paid, because that's really the two outcomes that you want, then you have to take them to court. Um, I did this myself yesterday from a tenant that wasn't paying. You know, we we've, we've tried. To, to get the money out of them and they're, they're just uh, not playing ball, coming up with lots of excuses and they don't have any proof that they've paid. So yesterday we uh, went on to Possession Claims Online which is a, a government site. What you can do is set yourself up online as an administrator then you need to assign yourself a, a user uh, to actually use the, 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 uh, the software. It's all online and then go on and submit a claim online. Uh, submitting the claim online is cheaper than doing it directly through the courts uh, it's a hundred pounds. I think it's 150 if you submit it directly through the courts. Basically, you just need to follow all of the uh, the processes online. It's very simple. It takes you through exactly what you you need to do. There's also help documents on there if if you need those. 